Locked on Target. Hi, crew, and this week on Hot Chocolate Chronicles, we have quite a few topics to go over. So, again, uh, you know, welcome to the show where we talk about life, the universe, and everything. I kind of talk about the channel a little bit, about what's going on, and, you know, uh, different topics in my life, uh, as well as, you know, just sharing a drink with you guys. It's more of a conversation type of show. So, welcome to the show. And of course, uh, you know, I do this in one take, so if there's flubs, well, you get to see the flubs, uh, because I, I kind of want that authenticity, you know what I mean? You know, it's not me being lazy, I just want to, these are my actual thoughts unedited, you know, that's that's the point of this show, is to kind of share me with you guys, if that makes sense. Uh, so, let's get into it. Today's topic is what my Marth Amiibo means uh, to me as well as uh, we're going to be giving a little channel update as well as uh, telling you the reason why I haven't uh, spent so much time uploading videos as of late um, and of course that's going to change this week. I'm making it a point to spend all of today uh, pretty much editing and putting up videos and scheduling them. But uh, yeah, so let's Yo, schedule, or yeah, schedule. Let's share a drink and uh, get this started. Ugh. All right. That's good. So, a uh, little channel update. I haven't uh, uploaded anything but uh, Hot Chocolate Chronicles in the past two weeks, but somehow we got three subs. Uh, but I'll t tell you a secret it's because I was playing Guild Wars 2. Oh my gosh, have I been playing Guild Wars 2? Um, and it's not because of anything. It's because I want to get the stupid beta key uh, for Guild Wars 2, the beta portal. Uh, the, I've been throwing in all of my free time in order to get, like, uh, the um, the beta. You know what I mean? Uh, so I could get, like, exclusive uh, videos up. Because, I mean, I'm, I know this is kind of a shallow reason because I'm going to be getting the uh, beta, or I'm going to be getting the expansion anyways when it comes out. Uh, but for me, if I can get up that video and it gets 1,000 views, well, let's look at my channel. Okay, well, I have 2,000 views total, right? I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but the, you know, the lowest video I can find, like, giving, like, doing the stress test or looking at the beta or whatever is 1,000 video or 1,000 views. So, you know, I get that, boom, I literally get double the coverage for my channel. Uh, so, I've been trying to farm that thing so much. Um, and a lot of people have said, oh, I got it after 15 minutes, sir. It takes about 40 hours for the average person. To put it lightly, I've put about 90 hours in game over the past two weeks uh, trying to farm this thing. And... Uh, most people are getting it at most around like 60, 70, and it's just not dropping for me. And I just, that's one of the things I dislike about RNG in games is just some people are blessed by getting everything right away. But me, someone who's played Guild Wars 2 for three and a half, you know, about 2.8 years uh, at this point, I have never had a precursor drop, uh, you know. I've never had one of the, I've never had good luck with random items, you know, I've never gotten one of the event drops in 15 minutes or whatever, I always have to farm, like, almost three times longer than everyone else to get the same drops, and I'm just waiting in that game to kind of get my break, you know what I mean, where I get the precursor and I get the, you know, I get the, oh, okay, for those of you not familiar, of uh, what a precursor is. A precursor is about a 400 gold item on the auction house, which a late late game that's not much. Uh, you get that in about a month's worth of farming. But uh, the the point is, as I w you need them to craft legendaries, which give you unique skins, like you uh, trail little uh, pools of uh, me metal as you walk around, or the kudzu, which you know pops up plants as you walk around, or you know. Uh, the short bow, which lets you shoot unicorns at people, you know, like they're just crazy weapons that alter your the in-game effects in some way. You know, um, you probably have seen if you played the game Eternity or Sunrise or Sunset, depending. Uh, that's actually a double legendary Eternity. It actually changes from the day to the night cycle, uh, but basically you get this like 
the sword is this cloud view, you know, where it's the night sky at a point or uh, at night or the day sky during the day, uh, you know, and you leave a trail of like this kind of pool of looking at the sky. Very popular if you've seen that. But basically you need one of these precursors to kind of craft these and a bunch of other things. Uh, but I've never gotten that drop, you know, so... Yeah, I plan on just saying the heck with the portal and going back to the regular schedule. But, be, you know, like, I understand. I'm sorry, guys, for, you know, lacking of the uploads. But, again, like, all of my videos together have gotten a 1,000 views or 2,000 views. If I get one of these beta portal keys, bam, I'm a, you know, I get more views from that than any of the content that I've been doing thus far. But then again, I think to myself, I haven't really been doing the attractive content that my channel plans on doing, you know what I mean? Like, Target Analysis and Locked on Target Show are my two main attractors. Off Target is kind of, um, you know, uh, just little rants that I do, whether I talk about Star Wars and whatnot. Uh, the kind of stuff that might get people to my channel, but those two are my two attractors, and I don't even have video up for them. The Let's Plays are just kind of like me just throwing up my gaming experience uh, before I do a review of a game, so people can look at, like, well, I do the Let's Plays, and, um, you know, that's... It that gets, gets my live reactions to it before I get this objective kind of uh, evaluation, all right? So, like... The, the Let's Plays are my editorial, you know, but the reviews are my objective analysis. So um, that's, that's kind of how I look at it, uh, and uh, that's, that's how I'm, I format, and that's why I do it. And I've actually debated uh, splitting the channel for Let's Plays, because I don't want to burn out my subs, because uh, Let's Plays are not... They're not the content I want to focus on, you know what I mean? Like... I feel like if that gets in my subscribers' feed, they might be burned out by my Let's Plays. Uh, you know, because the shows that I really think I want people to watch are Target Analysis and Locked on Target Show. Probably Locked on Target Show more than any of the other things. But, uh, again, like, it, it just... I just feel like Let's Plays are taking a different shape or going a different direction than what my actual channel I, I envision. Um, but it's not that not because I don't like doing Let's Plays. It's it's because Let's Plays uh, I feel like fill up the feed for the channel, and uh, then you know like suddenly I'm a Let's Play channel, and you know no one's watching my stuff. Or I I feel like I'm building two different audiences. Is that if that makes sense? And, uh, I don't know, I, I have to think about it more, but I do have, like, Locked On Target plays reserved, you know what I mean? Uh, so I've got the option to go, uh, form a second channel, I just, you know, I just can't figure out what to do. But, you know, let's, uh, th in this show, let me just go into a little bit about the philosophy of this show, alright? So... Hot Chocolate Chronicles is for the subscribers, okay? You know me, you want to know a little bit more about me. You want to know a little bit more about who I am and whatnot. So, uh, you know, enough to share, uh, you know, a hot beverage together. And let's just have another drink. Why not? And that's, that's what Hot Chocolate Chronicles is about. It's about, you know, just getting together and hanging out for, you know, 15, whatever minutes. However long my video goes and I ramble. But, you know, that's that's the gist of Hot Chocolate Chronicles. It's just this kind of fellowship type deal where, we, you know, we, we're, you sub to my channel, you like my stuff, you like me. So here you are. You want to know a little bit about, more about my family and a little bit more about me. And, uh, you know, updates about Abigail, actually. Uh, she's now standing, not by herself, but assisted. She pulls herself up on things and uh, stands. And I'm super excited about that. Um, you know, she's, she hasn't figured out climbing yet. Uh, she can't climb over things. She's not that coordinated. Uh, so like you could put like roadblocks of like blankets and whatnot and you like, keep her in a square. Um, cause she, she can stand, but she can't like crawl over things. Uh, if that makes sense. So that'll change within a week, I'm sure. But, uh, still it's a useful tactic for now. Um, 
for baby corralling. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm excited. Uh, so I asked for prayer for my finances last week. Oh, it's still going rough. Um, you know, it's, we still haven't found a solution. Um, but it, things are looking better um, because, uh, you know, my wife is putting in apps to other jobs and we're, we're trying to look down avenues where maybe I can work a little bit, uh, you know, that type of thing. Uh, but again, like, that's kind of the half the reason why I'm starting to do YouTube is this is work that I can do, uh, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, like, I love the channel and I love building the community, but this is also a business for me. I want to be doing it full time eventually, uh, you know. Um, I, I don't, I'm not here for the money, if that makes sense. I'm here because I love doing this and it's a job that I can do in my spare time as a stay at home dad. So again, yeah, but you're not here for that probably, but you're maybe, um, you're here for this guy and I'll just do this. Don't hate me because I have the Martha Amiibo. Um, I'm one of the, uh, wild, wild people that actually figured out how to get a Martha Amiibo and that's by say, oh man, Wife, my birthday's coming up, and Nintendo's launching these Amiibo things, and I really, really, really want Marth, and, but no one, like, we don't have enough money or whatever, you know. Uh, well, she went to the store on release day for Amiibo, right, and got me a Marth for my birthday, which was like a month after um, the Amiibo release about uh so that's the reason why i have the marth amiibo it's not because like ooh, i paid 90 dollars on ebay or you know whatever uh it's because my wife loves me and got, went out to the store and got me uh what i really wanted for my birthday so um kind of special to me in just you know like as a gamer but you know you know, say like, ooh, I got a hold of one of the first run Marth Amiibos. No, like, yeah, I get that. But, you know, I'm not into that. That's why they're out of the boxes, you know, because I want to use them. I want to, I want them to serve a purpose, uh, you know, and right now they're dotting my desk. Uh, you know, I use my Kirby Amiibo to kind of be like, oh, I'm going to look at the face of the viewer because it's right behind my webcam. So I'm not like looking at the blue lights of whatever. Um, yes, I'm looking at you, Logitech design. But, uh, yeah. I use, I talk to my Kirby Amiibo, so it, that serves its purpose, um, and it makes me smile, yay, but the, um, the Marth Amiibo to me is all about strategy, okay, games, games in general don't really make you think all that much, but there's some games that do, okay, uh, you know, Fire Emblem, just beating through Fire Emblem without losing anyone is on the hardest difficulty is nigh impossible, I've only done it on Sacred Stones, uh, and that's it. Out of the five, yes, five Fire Emblem games I've played, uh, the um, the only I've only been able to do it once. Okay, and I've tried it on every last one. It's always the one percent crit chance that gets me. I'm like, oh, they'll be fine. They have like a point one percent chance of getting a crit on my character to take them down, and lo and behold. RNG just loves me, loves to crit me, but never gives me anything, as I mentioned before when I was talking about Guild Wars. So, like, my luck in games, uh, well, some games. Destiny, I was very lucky. I got, like, uh, two icebreakers and a drop and three, uh, like, I had every uh, exotic um, before the first expansion, so... Um, I, that was one of the things that people kind of looked up for me is... But I spent a ton and a half hour. I spent a ton of time in that game too. So you know, I earned it. Um, and uh, RNG hated me in that game too. Come to think of it, uh, as far as armor goes, I did uh, the raid, uh, the vault of glass every week since its release, and I only hit thirty the week of the new expansion uh, on one of my characters. Right, and I did it three times. Actually. Three times uh, a week for about, mm, I think, four months on normal. No, two months on normal. And then I just did all hard modes because you get double drops uh, on hard mode. So I was doing hard mode at 29, um, which is not advisable. Uh, but, you know, I put in my work in that game and 
no rewards. You know, like that just that just seems to be how RNG games work. But I, that's another thing. Is I'll do a target analysis eventually of why RNG is bad for games in general because it doesn't reward the player in any way. It just it's luck. I, I don't. Yeah, I won't get into that. But you know. RNG does have a place, like in dice games and whatever, but I just, I I don't like it as a core game mechanic. You know what I mean? It's just not, not for me. Play a board game if you want that. You know, video games is not, you know, doesn't need to be determined by random on this. But um, yeah, so as I was mentioned, strategy. Okay, very few games actually use me allow me to use my mind in any way. Uh, Heroes of the Storm is one because I'm reacting to uh, the uh, the enemy team's uh, way. When I was playing Halo uh, PC Semi-Pro, you know, like when I was going to leagues and, you know, actually participating in cash tournaments, you know, um, that's, that's another story for another day. But, you know, like I had to use my mind. I had to analyze and be everywhere on the map. Uh, you know, I had to be like, well, I had to do countdown timers in my head. You know, when's rockets going to spawn? When's blah, blah, blah going to spawn? You know, and that's that's well and good. But, you know, that's all fast-paced thinking. That's more of anticipation and reactionary thinking. There's, no, there's not much grand strategy in games. Anymore, uh, even RPGs are level to win, you know, so invest your time and you win. But Fire Emblem games, the good ones, okay, um, don't allow you to level. You have to use your characters to level. There's, you know, uh, recently they've done away with this concept, but in mo the older Fire Emblem games, you played through the story and that's it. You didn't have little training areas. You didn't have the world map to uh, level up uh, you know, your, your characters. The level that you got your players by playing through the story was it. And you couldn't replay story missions. So, you know, you could have a completely underleveled character that was uh, advantageous. You know what I mean? Uh, and Pegasus Knights were a lot harder to train up, you know, uh, so it was a it was a different level of game design, um, you know. And that's that I never really encountered that, you know, like Final Fantasy Tactics Advance was still leveled to win or, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics was still leveled to win. This is leveled to win. Uh, you know, there's some tactics involved with the strategic RPGs, but the only one that really did it was original Fire Emblem, you know, like the early games. Now that the games are popular now, they have easier options with repeatable battles and whatnot where you can farm up, but I, I just love that as a game concept where you just, you know... You get a limited amount of resources to level up, and that's it. And that's why I think I like games like One Way Hero or uh, One Way Heroics or, you know, uh, Temple of the Mad God. You know, thing, games like that that are kind of quirky where you get limited amounts of resources and it looks like rogue It's roguelikes. It, that's, that's what my love for that boils down into. I figured it out. That's why I love roguelikes, is just the concept of, here's limited resources, deal with the system, and you can't farm up or expend too much time. You have to optimize your builds and use strategy. That is why I love roguelikes, is because it makes me think. I've never figured it out before, because I'm always second-guessing. Should I have taken this path? Should I have, you know, gone down earlier, gone down to the lower level earlier? Should I have, you know... D explored this path, you know, should I have fought that enemy or should I have run from it? You know, like, that's that's why I love roguelikes. So, you know, that's that's generally a self-discovery right there. Boom, live on the on the show, show. So I figured out what's the core of why I like roguelikes because they offer a challenge that this guy represents to me. Um, so, um, again, like, I, I'm super excited. So this show is helping me figure out things about myself. That's uh, that, that's really cool. Uh, sorry, I'm still geeking out over uh, uh, figuring out some like the why I like roguelike so much um, because I've been trying to figure it out for a while. I'm like these are all junk graphics and 
bad court gameplay design, but you know, like whatever. I I I spend hours into these things and I love it. But why why? So uh I think I got it is because people like to think sometimes and um games can do it, but they don't. Uh very very few games uh reward intellect and strategy. Okay? Uh and I get it like in Guild Wars 2, it's strategy boils down to kite enemy uh, and um, get them to pile up for the, uh, you know, where they're all together so all of your AoEs hit them uh, all at once. Uh, you know, like, that's not much strategy to me, and it's all, like, reactionary, as I mentioned, where it's don't stand in lava, don't get hit by lava, and uh, dodge roll out of attacks, you know, and that's, that's good. I'm not saying that's not strategy. That's skill in itself, but it's not... St- it's not intellect. It's uh, response. Okay, and that's that's there's a difference to me. So for me, it's strategy and intellect uh, for the Martha Amiibo. So thank you for tuning in. This has been a lot of fun to film. Sorry, it's gone a little bit longer than typical, but you know, this is. I would have to say, if I had to say that this was been any of my favorites to actually tell, this is. This is by far, honestly, my favorite episode of Hot Chocolate Chronicles that I've gotten to record. So thank you for tuning in. I very much appreciate it. Uh, you know, and um, again, thanks, thanks for watching. You know, if you have any uh, games that make you think, please leave them down in the comment. Again, this is this is a conversation between me and you. It's not just me talking for twenty minutes, right? So uh, you know. Tell me what games make you think. What does what does like strategy? Do you like RNG in games? You know what what's what's your preferred game type? So again, uh, you know, give me some comments in the discussion. Let's have a conversation. So until we meet again, stay on target. Thank you.